Hey everybody, Dr. G here. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist and body language expert, and today we're going to be analyzing more behavior and body language from Wade Wilson. Wade Wilson was recently found guilty for the murder of two women, and what we're going to be looking at today is his sentencing. Before we get started with this, a couple of quick things. One, I wanted to remind you, this is not a psychological evaluation of any kind. These are just my opinions. In addition to that, I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right, let's go. All right, good morning. Let the record reflect that the state's present, defense counsel, and the defendant are present. We're here on the state of Florida versus Wade Stevens. So the first thing you're going to notice about his body language, he's sitting back. He's trying to look casual. It's a way to show defiance. It's a way to look like you're not really taking things seriously. So that lean back, putting his legs forward, take up as much space as humanly possible. In Wilson, case number 19, CF 568. And we're here for Spencer hearing this morning. Are both the state and defense ready to... As you can see, he just gained physical distance from the judge. Now, we do that as a way to disconnect. So we're showing not only is he defiant, not only is he going to be sitting back in his chair, he's also going to move further back so that he has more physical distance, which disconnects emotionally more as well. Wilson, case number 19, CF 568. And we're here for Spencer hearing this morning. Are both the state and defense ready to proceed? State's ready, Judge. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Thank you. Yes, sir. All right. Very well, if everybody will announce themselves for the record. We are Andreas Gardner and Mr. Now, his facial position is very similar to last time. He's got his nose in the air. He's got his head cocked back a little bit. We tend to do that to show people we think that we are above them, that we're better than the situation we're in. So non-verbally, he very much seems to be trying to express that he's better than everything going on around him. Sarah Miller on behalf of the state. Good morning. Sarah Miller on behalf of the state. Kevin Shirley on behalf of Mr. Wilson. Lee Hollander on behalf. See, he's tapping his feet a little bit. There's nervous energy there. He's, but he's trying not to show that. It seems that he's trying to be as stoic as possible, to sit as still as possible. But that nervous energy is still coming out. Kevin Shirley on behalf of Mr. Wilson. Lee Hollander on behalf of Mr. Wilson. You can also see how predominantly he's showing his neck. Now. He obviously has a lot of tattoos, so there may be something to that. But also, when we show people our neck, that shows that we don't feel threatened by them. It's a way to say, look, this is a vulnerable part of me. I can expose it to you, and I feel no threat from you at all. Although I don't think that's necessarily true, because as you can see, he's swallowing a lot as he's doing that, which probably means there's a lot of anxiety. But I think that maybe that's what he's trying to show off. What we're seeing is someone who's capable of sitting very still. Now, I've paused it right here, but up to this point, he was sitting, wasn't moving much. We've seen that from him before. He's not having outbursts. He's not moving around. He's not trying to escape. He's not saying things that make no sense. There's a lot that we're not seeing. So if he, in fact, was so impulsive that he couldn't resist doing certain things, if we're actually blaming his behavior on that, he certainly seems capable of controlling himself now. And I have seen people, I've worked with people who are not capable of controlling themselves outside of really heavy doses of medication. I don't believe that he's medicated to his eyeballs right now, so I don't think that's what's going on here. But if, in fact, he had a neurological condition that made him incapable of controlling his impulses, I do not think that he would be this still or appear this calm. Something else you may notice is that on this side of his mouth, it looks like there's a little bit of a smile. Now, I think that is intentional. I think that he wants people to think that he's pleased, that he's happy, he doesn't care what's going on around him. I think that he wants to give off that impression. However, real smiles are on both sides of the mouth. So emotions outside of contempt are both sides of the face. So real smiles, you're going to see both sides. So when you see somebody doing a half cock smile, that's an attempt to look okay, to, live, to attempt to look satisfied. It doesn't tend to be a genuine emotion. Once again, you see those big breaths in, probably means that he's more anxious than he appears, which lends further credence to the idea that he is capable of controlling himself. Because when people sit for this long, particularly when they have really bad attention issues, they really start to get fidgety, they get restless, they start acting out, they start having outbursts. So the idea that he can't control himself to the point that he would have committed murder, I think that sounds like a stretch. But once again, I haven't evaluated him 
we're going to talk more about the findings that they have as they come up. Once again, you're going to see his feet tapping here, and that shows a somewhat subdued version of anxiety. Does that mean that he's got nerves? Probably, but it's managed. It's something that's not impulsive. So once again, the idea that he has really low barrier to being impulsive and that he can't control it at all, his behavior right now seems to suggest differently. And there's a, a more exaggerated version of that smile, which once again is not an authentic or genuine smile. Certainly doesn't tap into actually feeling satisfied or happy or anything like that. Now we're going to watch a brief moment where Wade Wilson actually spoke with the judge. We would rest. Right. Judge, I would just ask that you colloquy the defendant to ensure that he doesn't want to speak at this hearing. Oh, well, Mr. Wilson, you have an opportunity just like during any of the other phases of... Well, let me just finish real quick. Any of the other phases during the case, uh, if you want to address the court, uh, I would permit you to do that. Obviously, you know, everything's required. So one of the things that's so interesting is that when he's trying to engage, his body language is almost exaggerated. He's nodding very strongly, shaking his head very strongly. He wants you to know exactly how he feels. So the fact that he's able to rein all of this in and sit so still really does say something about his ability to control his behaviors. Courted, uh, but uh, you would have that opportunity if you wish. No one can prevent you from addressing the court if you wish to, and uh, no one can make you address the court if you don't want to. So it is a decision that's solely left up to you if you want to address the court or not. Not today, Later, when I come back, I will. Today, okay. no. I so once again, you see all that exaggerated body language. You see a slight smile on his face, which I presume is intentional. Okay. okay thank you. And he also said thank you afterwards. So it shows that he's capable of a certain level of decorum. It goes against the idea that he can't control himself. Now, there is a lot of testimony today provided by two different experts, one who basically who is a neurologist who basically said that he may have some dis brain dysfunction that means that he can't control himself. The other who basically said who is a forensic pathologist who basically said, well, he seems to have a normal brain. And a lot of his behavior seems to suggest that he has control over his behavior. So let's go on to the judge's sentencing and we'll see how he reacts to that. Needed to address prior to sentencing. So I have considered all of the testimony and evidence, arguments of counsel, applicable case law and statutes. I have prepared a written sentencing order, which I'll file contemporaneously. The one thing that you see a lot that I pointed out in the other video is heavy swallows. The more you see those swallows, the more anxious he's probably feeling. With the pronouncement of the sentence here today. <clears throat> I also have copies for the state and defense, which I'll hand out uh, once I conclude. So in the state of and you notice he looks at the camera quite often. He did this last time as well. Part of the reason for that is that he's putting forth an effort to make sure he looks like he wants to look for everybody that's watching. As I've talked about before, you don't get tattoos like this because you don't want people to see them. He cares about how he looks, and he's interested in people perceiving him in a very specific way. He saw Diane Ruiz walking to work and pulled over, pretending to ask for directions. She got into the car to provide directions. But the defendant strangled her when, he tri when she tried to exit. He then drove to an empty lot, strangling her into unconsciousness. Now, we're seeing something very disturbing right now. He doesn't do a lot with his mouth, but as the crime is being described, you see him licking his lips. Oftentimes, there's excitement that comes with that. Now, there are lots of things I talk about that are meant to soothe someone when it comes to touching their lips and that sort of thing. But the way that he's licking his lips right now look like he's probably enjoying what's being said to some degree. Watch this again. When, he try when she tried to exit. He then drove to an empty lot, strangling her into unconsciousness at least one additional time on the way there. When she tried to flee from the car, he drove over her at least one time, inflicting mortal injuries to her spine, ribs, and neck. The evidence showed that both murders were heinous, atrocious, and cruel, and that the second murder was cold, calculated, and premeditated. The defendant inflicted serious physical and emotional pain to the victims. Moreover, the defendant committed the murders while on probation for prior felony convictions, and he committed two first-degree murders contemporaneously with each other and with grand theft of motor vehicle, battery. Now you see him looking around right now. Now there's some people who are so intense they will just stare ahead, not blinking. Nothing seems to affect them. For him, I think that 
looking at the judge causes too much emotion. It's too intense. So even though he doesn't move around, even though he's not doing a lot of self-soothing behaviors, maintaining that gaze feels too intense. So he has to look around some, particularly right now, as the sentence is getting ready to get handed down. And burglary of a dwelling. There were no statutory mitigating circumstances that were established, but the court considered the non-statutory mitigating circumstances presented by the defendant. Out of 13 enumerated... Now, you may have just noticed he actually just gained a little bit more distance from the judge. Watch this right here. ...mitigating circumstances presented by the defendant. Out of See, he's scooting a little bit further back. This feels too intense to him. The emotions are probably building up too much, so he is trying to gain more emotional distance by getting physical distance. 13 enumerated non-statutory mitigating factors. The court found that 10 had been established. Out of those established, six were given little weight. The totality of the mitigating circumstances indicates that the defendant suffers from drug use from a young age, along with undiagnosed and untreated mental health issues of some kind. He felt abandoned by his biological parents, but had a devoted adoptive family who raised him in a supportive and loving environment. Defendant did not resist law enforcement when arrested and confessed fully to both murders. Now, it's interesting. As they were talking about his childhood, you finally saw a little bit of a reaction. Let's watch this right here. Raised him in a supportive and loving environment. Defendant did not resist law enforcement when arrested and confessed fully. Now, that look right there, that tends to be stress. We tend to bunch our lips together when we're feeling stressed. So talking about his family or talking about his upbringing may actually be evoking some kind of reaction. To both murders. The court is and then afterward, he lowers his chin. His neck is no longer quite as vulnerable as it was. So there does seem to be some unconscious behavior that comes along with hearing, hearing the judge talk about this. Further consider the given and giving great weight to the advisory verdict of the jury, which who recommended that the death penalty be imposed by a vote of nine to three on count one for the murder of Christine Melton and a vote of 10 to two on count four for the murder of Diane Ruiz. Under the totality of the circumstances and evidence, the court finds no basis to override the jury's verdict. The totality of the circumstances warrants that the defendant, Wade Stephen Wilson, be sentenced to death for each count of first-degree murder. Accordingly, it is ordered to the judge that the defendant, Wade Stephen Wilson, be sentenced as follows. Count one, first-degree murder of... I talked about where his gaze is. He doesn't seem to be able to sit in one place. He's looking around, but he does seem to be trying really hard to sit still because it would take a lot of effort hearing this to move so little. Christine Melton, the defendant is hereby sentenced to death. Count two, grand theft of a motor vehicle. The defendant is sentenced to five years imprisonment in the Florida Department of Corrections. Count three, battery. The defendant is hereby sentenced to 364 days in the Lee County Jail. Count four, first degree murder of Diane Ruiz. The defendant is hereby sentenced to death. Count five, the burglary of a dwelling. The defendant is hereby... So you see, he starts to move his head around a little bit. By a sentence to death. Count five, the burglary of a dwelling. But then he looks at the camera, reminds he's being watched, and then he goes back to that default position. That is how he wants to be seen. Chin up in the air, nose in the air. That is the look he's looking for. The defendant is hereby sentenced to 15 years imprisonment in the Florida Department of Corrections. Count six, petty theft. The defendant is hereby sentenced to 364 days in Lee County Jail. The defendant is given... Credit for all time served on this case on all counts. All counts are to run concurrent with each other, meaning at the same time. So we'll go ahead and stop here. Hopefully this has helped you better understand some of the behavior and body language you observed from Wade Wilson. It was fairly similar to last time we saw Wade Wilson. He does tend to sit very still, does tend to try to breathe through all of the stress going on, but he also has signs that show that he's probably fairly anxious during all of this. However, the argument that he can't control himself, this behavior seems to suggest that he in fact can. Now, that doesn't mean that he isn't impulsive. He very likely is. He's done many impulsive things. But the idea that he's so impulsive that he can't control it seems exceedingly unlikely given what we observe today. If you have any other thoughts, please let me know in the comments below. And also let me know if there are other cases you want me to analyze. Last thing before we get finished up is I do want to remind you to like and subscribe if you want to see more content just like this. All right. Thanks for watching.